Center's 2014 Starting. annual dinner. <laughs> Please rise the American and Israeli anthems led by the RTMA Choir. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we have at the twilight's last gleaming whose bright stripes and bright stars through the perilous heights o'er the ramparts we watch words so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bomb bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet
Адонай, Ишмар Хамиколра, Ишмар Снавшеха. Адонай, Ишмар Цайсахаувеха, Меатаби Адола. Шира Малос, Мима Маким, Кросих Адонай. Адонай, Шима, Деколи, Тихианос, Нехокашу, Вос, Декол, Тахану, Ной. Има, Донос, Тишмая, Адонай, Мияма. Ки има ха слиха леман ти варе. Ки виси Адонай, ки веса навши лидвара халте. Навши ладонай ми шамерим на бокер, шамерим на бокер. Yachel Yisrael El Adonai Ki im Adonai achesed Veharbei im alfedus Vehoi yifdes Yisrael Mikol avonosav אחינו כל בית ישראל, הנצונים והצרות והשביעה העומדים בהם היום ובבקשה. המקום ירחם עליהם ויוציאים מצרות על ברכו מאפלו לאורו משיבוט לגולו. חשתו בעגלו בזמן קריב ונאמר אמן. Thank <laughs> you.
Good evening. Wasn't that a fantastic video? Just a small snapshot of all the wonderful things that happen on a daily basis at the JEC. Thank you all for coming to our 73rd annual dinner. As we begin, I'd like to acknowledge the presence of our Marda Asra, the Dean of the JEC, my boss, my father, Harav Taitz. And his boss, my mother, the Redditson. <laughs> I would also like to take a moment to thank other esteemed guests, a little bit of housekeeping that we do here. Uh, first and foremost, Dr. Stephen Sinkfer, the President of the Board of Trustees of the JEC. <laughs> Along with our entire Council of Governors, Board of Trustees, and the members of the various work committees who helped put this night together. Without their help, without their guidance, it would be much tougher to run the school. Thank you for all that you do for the JEC. <laughs> I would also like to welcome Dr. David Farahi, President of Kane University. Tom Beck, the Executive Director of the Jewish Family Service of our Federation. Brian Fox, the Executive Vice President of the Green Lane Y. And Nadine Brechner, representing Trinitas Regional Medical Center. Uh, many people helped make the dinner possible. Uh, the dinner chairs, Erwin and Lynn Fish, Eliezer and Esther Flint, and David and Sharon Halpern. The journal chairs, I'll go through it, I'll, you know, I'll look up, then you can applaud. <laughs> Our journal chairs, Dr. Elliot Fishkin and Larry and Adele Diener, and the dinner committee members, Wayne and Kathy Greenberg, Miriam Sapika, Ora Shapiro, Shana Weitz, Matis Weingast, and Deborah Wen. Um, JEC is a school not only of the Elizabeth community, but also of the Elizabeth community. I would like to welcome all the rabbis who are part of the broader JEC family and the communities that they represent. They're seated over there. In the school itself, it takes a lot of people to make things happen. Um, Steve Karp, the executive director of the JEC. Robert Hart, the controller, and Adina Abramoff form the, uh, the team that joins with me in the administrative end. Uh, the principals of our three divisions, Rabbi Shlomo Schwartz of the Yeshiva of Elizabeth, Rabbi Peretz Hachbaum of the RTMA Masifta, and Rabbi Joseph Oratz of Bruria. Without them, we wouldn't be a school. And of course, together with their assistant and associate principals, their faculty and their staff. I'd like to ask them all to stand. They never do when I ask them to, but please stand so we can applaud you for all the hard work that you do. 
<clears throat> a lot of hard work went into making the actual dinner itself. And at the very forefront, I would like to thank Rahi Nairin, Evelyn Logan, and Adarit Heights for all the work they've done in the office. You'd all be standing around here wondering what to do if it not for those three women. Um, there's a partnership between the school and parents. And we do our job, and parents do their job. And the bridge between that is the PTA. And we're lucky to have three very dedicated women who run the PTAs for each of the divisions. Tara Spire for the Yeshiva Division. <laughs> Rena Lieberman for Breweria. And at the Masifta, after many years of working in the PTA of different divisions, she's finally graduating from the JEC. Her youngest just graduated high school last week. Heidi Pekarski, thank you much for all your devoted effort to the PTA. And finally, to the people who put the food on the table today and the flowers and all the arrangements, Nathan DeHoff of Avenue Flowers for his beautiful centerpieces. He donates them every year out of the goodness of his heart. He's really a pleasure to work with. Marty Meyer, the caterer, for all the wonderful food that we've eaten. It's been delicious and I hope you all enjoyed it and that you'll be patient for the dessert that will come at the end. Moshe Antelis for the music and the sound this evening. Sounds great, Moshe. And finally, to Uri Abramov, um, who worked on the videos, the lighting, the production for tonight's evening. You will see his handiwork as the evening goes by. Thank you very much, and enjoy the evening. It gives us great pleasure to call upon an RTMA alumnus, class of 1973, husband of a JEC faculty member, cherished JEC parent, grandparent, and the president of our Board of Trustees, Dr. Steve Sinkford. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the Board of Trustees, I would like to thank everyone here for joining us tonight and showing your support for our yeshiva. Even with your support, the task of providing a quality education is quite daunting, but without you, we wouldn't stand a chance. We're working very hard to ensure that the yeshiva will continue to thrive and grow. To this end, we are making efforts to reconnect with alumni. Class reunions have taken place and more are in the works, and we continue to grow our alumni database with the hope that those of us who have benefited from a JEC education will show Hakara Satov and give something back so that future generations will have the same opportunity. Another exciting development to report is that the JEC was selected this year to participate in a new program called Create a Jewish Legacy. The program is coordinated by the Jewish Community Foundation of Greater Metro West New Jersey and is designed to teach local synagogues, day schools, and social service organizations to obtain commitments of legacy gifts from donors of all ages, lifestyles, and interests, thus ensuring their future financial viability. You'll be hearing a lot more about this in the coming months. I should also note that of the 15 organizations that were selected, and you had to apply to get selected to this program, JEC is the only school among them. There are many positive things to report about all of our divisions this year. Our early childhood department has increased by 37.5%, Blea and Hara. from approximately 80 to 110 students, and the numbers from this coming year will be about the same. We are also proud to report that in the elementary school, our students spent a total of 47,362 minutes, which is almost 800 hours, 
reading during this year's annual readathon competition. And in Rabbi Moshe Kramer's class, 15 boys learned and reviewed close to 20,000 Mishnayos. There were two very special events that took place this year that I want to mention. On May 15th, for the second year in a row, our students participated in a financial literacy program. This program was brought to us by my fellow board member, Brian Ness. <laughs> Brian is a partner at the renowned financial organization, PricewaterhouseCooper and he brought with him 25 PwC professionals, including our own Sammy Rosenzweig. He brought them to our school, and they worked with our students covering topics such as money management, credit, budgeting, trustworthiness, as it pertains to money lending and investing. The second event I wanted to note was our Anlagba Omer, our Yeshiva PTA, led by PTA President Tara Spire. <laughs> organized our second annual Lagbomer Walkathon to raise funds for the yeshiva programming. More than 500 people, composed of parents, students, and family members, participated in the event. It was a glorious day, maybe even more so by the wonderful outpouring of school and community spirit. Tara did a phenomenal job with the help of approximately 20 volunteers who I can't name tonight. And we really appreciate all of the hard work you put in. Before I report on our high school divisions, I'd like to also note that uh, one of our teachers, teaches both in RTMA and Bruria, Rabbi Shmuel Taub, was awarded the prestigious Grinspoon Award for Educational Excellence this year, Mazel Tov. In RTMA, Rabbi Peretz Hachbaum concluded a very successful first year as principal. He introduced a mandatory one-year Zionism program designed to infuse our students with a love of Eretz Yisrael. And there's also a revamped college guidance program under the leadership of Jeffrey Frank. And this year, I'd also like to say proudly that RTMA students learned thousands of hours of Torah in the Voluntary Night Seder program. This year, Bruria launched its STEM program with an accelerated science, technology, engineering, and math track being offered to students to help them gain a competitive edge upon graduation in these highly competitive fields. RTMA actually initiated this program last year. We're also very, very proud to report that Shalva Eisenberg, a Bruria ninth grader, took second place nationally in the Chidon Tanakh, the International Bible Contest. And she will be rep representing the United States in next year's international final in Israel on Yom Ha'atzma'ut. We should also note that Bruria took first place this year in the Torah Bowl competition, competing competing against several dozen other schools. We now have a social media awareness program in all three divisions, developed and run by Guidance Department Chair Dr. Akiva Perlman. These programs are designed to make students aware of the ramifications of revealing too much personal information on social media and how to stay safe on the internet. As in previous years, most of the students, many of the students, I should say, from both RTMA and Buria, have received college scholarships and entry to YU and other honors programs. We're really proud to report that once again, over 80% of our graduates will be continuing their education in Israel next year. And a point that's uh, particularly poignant this evening in light of the, the tale that we said at the beginning of our program, it should be noted, we never really made mention of this before, but over three dozen of our graduates are serving or have served in the Israel Defense Forces. And, and 
I can't list all the names, but they are, I think, on the next to the last page of the JEC Today that was distributed to all the tables here. Tonight, it's a special privilege for me to participate in paying tribute to a distinguished group of honorees, most of whom I've known for a very, very long time. We are recognizing Stella and Dennis for their year... We're recognizing Stella and Dennis for their years of devoted service to our school and their dedication to the well-being of our children and faculty members. I would like to personally say thank you for all you have done for us over the years, especially my family included. I've known our Lave Tove honorees, Mimi and Harry Stadler, since I... since I began davening in Adas Yisrael some 25 years ago, believe it or not. They are a wonderful couple with a beautiful family who have dedicated themselves to their shul and our community for so many years. Mazel tov to you both and on this most deserved honor. And on a personal note, Harry, I want to thank you for all the encouragement you've given me over the years while I've been davening in shul with you, and especially for the harmony that you've provided so beautifully. Madame Captain, Honestly, I never had the pleasure of making your acquaintance before this evening. My two brewery grads both took Spanish while in high school. But my older daughter, Shira, went on a trip to Europe with you, and my youngest, Lizzie, did have you for a class in seventh grade, current events, I believe. So I asked each one of them about you and interestingly got the identical response. You are a warm and loving person and have a way of making every student feel that they are special. Our thanks for all you have done for our children all these years and mazel tov on being honored tonight. And to our guests of honor this evening, Marty and Miriam, As is your way, you've been trying to avoid this evening for a very long time. It has never been your style to seek out the spotlight, quite the opposite. But it has always been your way to step to the forefront whenever people have needed you. Baruch Hashem the Rav was finally able to convince you that we needed you to say yes. And it is our honor and privilege tonight to celebrate you for all you have done on behalf of the JSC in our community. I have known and admired you both for nearly 40 years. You came to Elizabeth in 1975, when I was just a kid. And from very humble beginnings, built a beautiful bias Ne'eman be Yisrael. Whether you choose to er interpret Ne'eman as faith, trustworthiness, dependability, or as being everlasting, your bias certainly encompasses all these qualities. During all those years of building career and family, you never shied away from taking on causes and responsibilities to help the greater community. Marty, you have served the community in multiple capacities, having been president of the Beis Yitzchak, president of the Union Y, vice president for the OU New Jersey branch, a member of the board of directors of the Elizabeth Kolel, and most importantly to us, president of the Jewish Educational Center Board of Trustees. Miriam, besides supporting Marty in all he has undertaken, you have achieved a reputation as a balas chesed beyond compare. This despite the fact that you've always tried very privately to go about your chesed in staka. But we know. Al shlosha dvarim ha'olam omeid, al ha'torah avodah milus chasodim. The world stands on three pillars, on three principles, learning of Torah, service of Hashem, and acts of kindness and generosity. You have built your home and raised your wonderful family with all these same principles and serve as role models and a source of pride and inspiration to us all. On behalf of the JEC and the Elizabeth Hillside communities, 
I want to thank you for all you have done and meant to us and wish you the heartiest and most heartfelt Mazel Tov. I'd like now to call upon our Mora de Asra, Rashi Shiva, the Dean of the JEC, and my Rav, Rav Eliza Meir Taitz. There isn't too much that was left unsaid by Dr. Sinkford in his remarks. In fact, he anticipated part of what I was going to say. But may I, just before we begin the presentations, mention one name that uh, my son left out of his thanks for helping the smooth functioning of the JEC, and that is our bookkeeper of over 25 years of standing, Mrs. Harriet Nigger. As Steve mentioned, Torah on service, on acts of kindness. And in fact, well, there's a general rule that a Rav has to speak about the Parsha Sashabua. As someone once said, Lekomidi the letter means of a Parsha Sashabua. There's nothing which is not alluded to in the portion of the week. Whatever portion of the week happens to be, and whatever occasion has to be alluded to. And in the parsha we just read, parsha Shlach, after telling the story of the Miraglim, of the spies, we have three mitzvahs. The mitzvah of the Nesachim, the libations that were to accompany the sacrifices. The mitzvah of Chala, the portion of the baked goods which was to be given to the Kohen. And the mitzvah of Tzitzis, in our garments. And these do represent the three branches that we're talking about. Chala, well, the first one is the Sachim, which is the Karbonos, sacrifices, and that represents Avoda. Avoda means the service to Hashem, and that was in the time of the Besamikdash, the sacrifices that were offered, which the Sachim enhanced and accompanied. Chala is the portion of the baked loaves which was given to the Kohen, a culmination of the various charities that were given from agricultural products in Eretz Yisrael, beginning with Trumos and Maestros, the various tithes, culminating with the portion of the dough given to the Kohen. And of course, Tzitzis is intended to remind us of the entire Torah by the various uh, allusions which add up to the 613 mitzvahs of Torah that represents Tzitzis. And another way too, Tzitzis is a mitzvah which is given to men. It's a mitzvah sasei as man roma, a time-dependent positive commandment, which with two exceptions, women are exempt. Chala is one which is given over primarily to women. Chala, nida chala, adlaka saneir, those are the women's mitzvahs. And, of course, the nesachim belong to both. And as we honor our guests of honor, Marty and Miriam Knecht, should point out that they do indeed shine in all these areas. Dr. Seifer referred to the Chasodim, and he mentioned Miriam, but Marty is no slacker when it comes to Milos Chesed, of giving of his means to help and support those in need, both individuals and organizations. As far as the Avoda is concerned, when it comes to the money, we, the Pesach says, Kabedes Hashem Be'honcha, honor Hashem from your means. And the Lord also says, Kabedes Hashem Migroncha, from your throat. And anybody who has heard Marty Dabin for the Yombud, most recently, three days ago, Shabbos morning for Shachris, knows what a covenant he gives when it comes to davening and service to Hashem. And of course, when it comes to the mitzvahs of the Torah, there is no question that both are dedicated. I'm reminded of something my grandfather's a friend of was my father's predecessor, as Reverend Elizabeth remarked, 
as the Gemara says, I saw Ishak Sheira, who was a proper woman, Bala. Now that's usually translated as one who does the will of her husband. But the word osa has two meanings. It means to do and it means to make. And he said what it means is, and Ishak Sheira is one who is Oysa Ritzon Bala. She sees to it that her husband's desires are the ones that are proper ones, are the Torah and Mitzvah's ones. And I think Mari would be the first to agree that such is his Asia sky. Of course, these three mitzvahs, the Sochim, Tzitzis, Chala, the first letters spell out the word Netzach, eternity, because they represent the three categories which contribute to the eternity of the Jewish nation. But I find it interesting that the words, the Sochim, Chala, the Tzitzis, add up to 819 which is exactly the gematria of Mordechai or Miriam Knecht. I consider it my privilege to be able to call up the Knechts for the presentation. If you please come up. You want to know the sacrifices that the Knechts have made? As was mentioned, I sort of twisted their arm to accept tonight's honor. They came back from Israel to be here. And if you know them, you know what it means for them to leave Israel. But at the same time, I want to take this opportunity to wish them a mazel tov on the event that took place right before they left on the engagement of their oldest granddaughter. Mazel tov. What do you give to the people who have everything? A plaque. <laughs> so let me read it. One who is charitable and just fills the world with kindness. Jewish Educational Center Annual Banquet, Martin and Miriam Knecht, Guests of Honor, and it's signed by myself as Dean and Dr. Sinfer as President. And the date's 19th of Sivan, 5774, June 17th, 2014. I might mention that while Dr. Sinfer is the first alumnus to serve as president of the JEC, Marty is the first former employee to serve in that capacity. <laughs> Mazel tov. You, know, you go from strength to strength in, in good health. In good health. Thank you, Rabbi Tait. I appreciate your kind words. And so does my wife Miriam, I'm sure. And yes, she keeps me straight, for sure. She gets the credit. <clears throat> I didn't realize that I was the first past employee to become president of the JEC. I remember those days well. I was sitting on the wall opposite where Pinchas Mordechai Tights, which was truly a pleasure and an honor, and I learned a great deal from him. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Baruch shehechiyanu v'kiyimanu v'higiyanu l'azman hazeh v'hamei v'nyoven. Let us hope that all of us will have the opportunity to make a birchas hoda'a in the very near future <coughs> on the return of our Israeli brethren. My allergies are really terrible today. I've been suffering all day long, and so I called in a pinch hitter, my dear son, who will be delivering my response. The words will be mine, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> but hakol kol Yosef. Please welcome my son Yosef 
to say my words and my wife's. Yosef. <laughs> I would like to apologize in advance if the speech is not delivered in the same crisp manner that my father would have, but with the very short notice, I will do my best. Rabbi Tights, members of the board, guests of honor, and honored guests. Before I begin my formal remarks, I'd like to congratulate my fellow honorees and tell them how happy Miriam and I are to be here sharing this evening with them. To Harry and Mimi Stadler, our Lev Tov awardees, Harry, you served as a Gabbai of Adas Israel for over 20 years. I would never have done that. It's like taking your life in your own hands. Kol kavod. Just keep standing there and looking cute. And Harry, don't worry. As far as the Lev Tov designation between you and Mimi, we know who has the Lev Tov. Madame Kantan, you loved our daughters when you taught them at Bruria, and they loved you in return. I especially remember when you escorted the girls to Europe on a midwinter break, and you were able to buy cheap dirt. Everything was for sale, cheap dirt. Madame, I must apologize for my father wanted it show off his French and had inserted a sentence in French. However, the extent of my French is gunished. <laughs> exactly my point. So please forgive me for leaving it to a simple mazel tov. And now moving on to our special service awardees, Stella and Dennis. Stella, you knew about the romance going on between our youngest child, Shai, and his little girlfriend, Esther Hornung, long before I or anyone else knew, because you saw them growing up as little kids at the JAC. Today, thank God, they're married and living in Israel with two kids, Kane Yerbu, and every Saturday morning, Stella, you're the first to greet me with a cheery good Shabbos. However, I don't know how to answer to you. But tonight, I know what to say. Mazel tov on your reward, well deserved. <laughs> Last but not, but not least, Dennis. I go back so far with Dennis that Dennis remembers when my hair was black. And I could say it was a long, long time ago. Congratulations, Dennis, and keep up the great work. And now, to the real question. What in the world am I doing up here tonight as the guest of honor? Being the only past JAC president who has not been so honored is not a sufficient reason. And so, I had to think hard to justify to myself being here before you tonight. And I recalled an event that occurred in June of 1979, 35 years ago. No, I was not born then. Between me and our Rav Pinchas Mordechai Taitz, Zecher Tzadik Levracha, the founder of this great institution. In June of 1979, I met with the Rav to give him notice that I would be leaving my position at the JEC where I had worked for a few years as Director of Community Development. I was giving notice since I had completed law school where I went at night, and I would be taking a job with the prestigious law firm of Steyer and Douglin. And when I told the Rav I was leaving, his cryptic resp response was, I'll discuss it with the board. You hear? I'll discuss it with the board? And I said to myself, what is there to discuss? I'm giving my notice and I'm quitting. And so we schmoozed for another few moments and once again I told her of tights that I'll be leaving his employment in two weeks. And once again, the Rav responded, 
I'll discuss it with the board. At this time, I began having visions of the Psukim and Mishpatim, you know, where the indentured servant is not leaving the employment of his master, so you bring him over to the doorpost and drill a hole into his ear, and the Torah says, he shall be his knecht, mean slave in Yiddish, forever. But then, when I stood up to leave his office, Rav Pinchas Taitz called out to me with these words, Marty, don't worry. You'll get your paycheck from Steyer and Duglin, but you'll always work for the JAC. And those words, you'll always work for the JAC, have constantly resonated with me as a guiding principle, both in my personal and professional life. I've always tried to view myself as a community member dedicated to the advancement of the JEC. And what does the JEC mean to Miriam and me? It's not only the yeshiva where all our children received an outstanding education at the hands of dedicated and committed rabbeim and teachers par excellence. It's not only that crown jewel known as Buria, where all our daughters and daughters-in-law attended, except for one who grew up in England, and they all received an education that was and is the envy of all in the know. The JC is not only the yeshiva, mesifta, and buria, but to our family, it's also a network of shuls with warm and embracing rabbanim who are always available for our spiritual needs and provide us with a place to daven and hear a good cheer. And it's not only yeshiva and shuls, but a community or a kehila as well. Where else can you find one institution that provides you with kashras, mikvah, eruv, a kolel, and rahman al a chever kadisha, all under one address? That is what makes our community truly unique. And finally, in addition to being a yeshiva and shuls and a community, the JC to me is a family. It is a family of friends and neighbors, always caring and concerned for one another, with a proper set of Torah true values and aspiration. The JEC family is one of our greatest assets to be admired and envied by all. That is what JEC means to Miriam and me. With tights, we read a few weeks ago how Miriam and Nevia was afflicted with Saras, and how all of Klal Yisrael waited for her recovery to continue on their journey. Rashi brings down the Gemara and Sota, which states that Miriam was being rewarded measure for measure. For what? Because of the one hour that she lingered for Moshe when, she was, when he was cast in the river. The Shemina Tovas, Miriam had waited for her brother Moshe decades and decades earlier. Why was she being rewarded now so much later in life? And he answers, Ein hachinami. Sometimes it takes a lifetime to truly appreciate and reflect upon the good one has experienced at the hands of another. Riftites, Miriam and I have not accomplished much in our lives other than to build a beautiful family, Li'ai and Hara, most of whom are with us here tonight. They are our, our legacy. They are our building blocks of the future. Miriam and I are, the, are their parents, and we thank and give praise to the Rabbon of Shalom for guiding us each step of the way. And tonight, we would like to express our deep and sincere Hakar Satov to you, and through you to the entire Tights family, past, present, and future, for, the third, for being the third crucial partner in building what we are so proud of. Miriam and I cannot think of another community, an institution in which to raise our children, other than in Yerushalayim. And with that thought, Mr. President, I move that next year's JEC annual dinner be held in Yerushalayim Habnuya.
One of the benefits of being asked to speak on behalf of my father is that just as my parents wanted to give Hakar Sotov to Rav Taitz and the JEC, I, on behalf of my siblings and our spouses, wanted to give, it, wanted to give Hakar Sotov to our dear parents. Abba and Ima, we know there isn't anything you wouldn't do for us, and there isn't anything that we as your children wouldn't do for you. Even with all your community commitments, you always made sure we came first. And for that, we are forever grateful. May Hashem bless you with many more years of health and nachas from all your children and grandchildren. Ad maya ve'ezrim. Thank you all very much for coming. That extra last paragraph or so was ad-libbed, it wasn't in my speech. And if we run over tonight on this program, please excuse me and Yosef for a beautiful job, really, Yosef. Thank you very much. <clears throat> I hope you've all enjoyed the virtual journal that's been outside that you probably have seen up on the screens here tonight. It saves a lot of money. Remember when they used to have all those journals on the tables and so many were thrown away? For what? There it is. It serves the same purpose. A couple are printed and it serves the same purpose. But there's one ad that's missing in that journal, intentionally perhaps, so that my wife wouldn't be embarrassed over and over. But what that ad would say, and it's probably more than platinum, is as follows. Dear Miriam, Roses are red, inside family joke. All my poems, Miriam is an expert poem writer. My poems are roses are red. Roses are red, they do well in sunlight. Without your love and support, I would not be up here tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome my dear wife, Miriam. Marty, you gave me four minutes. Mida connected Mida. I never listen. <laughs> I have my props here. Lichvot Harav, Harabanim, teachers, parents, students, friends, family and guests of honor. Bruchim Habaim, welcome and thank you. May I take this moment to say Mazel Tov to my dear husband, Marty. Shelanu, Shelcha. Everything that we have is yours and you made it possible. Mom and Dad, Aleim Shalom, are Shepping Nachas. Marty, you personify what it is to be a Yiddish Knecht, Tzigot und Tzalat, a servant to God and to man. But men chayim l'chayim, Abba, my father, may he live and be well, who is an heir to soul with my mother, thank God, paid you the ultimate compliment over 42 years ago when he said, Sehatzach geleint, to come into America, not to kriegen as ein item. It was worth coming to America just to get a son-in-law like you. The rest is history. May we share bis hinten zwanzig, many smachot in good health, both here and in Eretz Yisrael. My name is Miriam, the daughter of number 184, 843, the granddaughter of number 184, 844, of what was the tribe of Israel. That is how Hitler would have wanted me to introduce myself. A relic 
frozen in time amongst the millions of stolen Jewish artifacts on display at what was to be the largest museum in the world, the Fuhrer Museum, located in Austria, Hitler's birthplace, Yemachshimo. Thank God, almost 70 years after my father's liberation from Buchenwald, I proudly want to introduce myself as Miriam Bat Avram Baracha Leia Kurzfeld, the granddaughter of Moshe Ezra and Tova Dank, and Mayor Usher and Baila Hinder Kurzfeld, from, what, from the tribe of Israel, Meshevet Yisrael. On May 14, 1984, Mark Zuckerberg celebrated his 30th birthday. Bloomberg News announced he was worth a billion dollars for each year since he was born. I know a couple who were way more wealthy than Zuckerberg. My parents. My mother always brings up, she boasts, for every nin and nina, for every great for Graham child, whether it's a boy or a girl, is worth a billion dollars. I tell you, Kang Yerbu, my parents are the great grandparents of over $55 billion. On your tables, you will find a gift for Marty and I. It is called Perke Avot. Translated to mean ethics of our fathers. To me, the word ethics seemed to be elusive, hard to understand. So I went to my friendly Hebrew English dictionary and I looked up Pe Resh Kuf. To my surprise, the first entry was Perak, which means to take apart, to disjoint, dismantle, liquidate. And after that is the word Perek, which means joint, chapter, a link. And all you see is it takes just a few dots, periods, dashes to, God forbid, break the link from the past, present, to the future. Attract the youth, and you guarantee the preparation, preparation, right? The, okay, you got it, of a nation. I knew I was going to mess up on that one. And I want you to look on page four, on uh, it's, it's um, in Perkei Avot, Perek Beit, Mishnah Aleph, and there you will find what it says, and it's the smartest smartphone right here in Perkei Avot, and it says, Histakel b'shlosha dvarim ve'enataba l'dei aveira. Consider three things, and you will not come into the grip of sin. In other words, you won't incriminate yourself. Da malamala mincha. Know what is above you. One, ayin ro'ah. Two, ozen shema'at. Three, v'chol ma'asecha b'sefer nechtavim. Each and every deed is indelibly marked and written in the book. It can't be deleted or airbrushed. May I share with you three such links that I shared with my father just this past Pesach. When I asked my father what made him pick Israel at the age of 16 with no place to go back to, as the country of choice after he was liberated. And my father said this to me, Mirala, 
Ich habe gehört, I heard, that there's a country in this world where every street name is in Hebrew. I wanted to go to the place where I could see every street in Hebrew. Chalamoid Pesach, Shabbos. My father is a smoker, unfortunately. And Marty knows, he always kibitzes with my father to get him to smoke that first cigarette after Havdalah, way after Shabbos has ended. But my father knows his tricks. And Marty says to my father, Abba, come on, for Shabbos, 25 hours, do you have any desire for a cigarette? And my father says, no, no desire. And Marty continues the conversation and says, look how great the mind is that for 25 hours, you don't desire a cigarette. And my father looks at Marty and he says, Matra, look how great Shabbos is that I don't desire that cigarette for 25 hours. Fast forward a few weeks ago, Mayor, my brother, Rabbi Mayor Kurtzfeld, was at our kitchen table. And I don't know about you guys, but all I know is when I sit with men at the table, going through their school years, I swear they never went to the same school I went to. It's all about the fun and games that they had. And here it was, he was sitting, and somebody threw a spitball at his teacher in elementary school. The teacher looked up in dismay and looked at my brother and said, out of here. And my brother said, I didn't do it. It came from you, I saw it, get out of here, you can't stand in my class. Teacher students listen up as they say. Mayor was crying, he had to leave the school, the principal told him to get home, and at home you could only imagine what Mayor thought he was awaiting him when my father was coming home. And Mayor told my father, bitterly crying, Abba, they threw me out of school, they said I did something that I didn't do. And my father looked at Mayer, and he said, Ich glaub doch, I believe you. Aber ich will sie nicht verschämen. I won't embarrass the teacher. Go back and apologize. And my brother looks at me and he says, Miriam, you know, Abba could have asked me to do anything. The fact that he believed me, that meant everything to me. I just want to tell you of an aha moment that I had a few years ago, and here's my prop, the mirror. A few years ago, I was in Passaic before Pesach with my daughter, Bacha, and we went to a shir. I don't remember who gave it, I don't know her name, but there was one beautiful point that she made about these beautiful mirrors. Our imams, when they were in Mitzrayim, wanted to attract their husband to propagate and create another generation. And she said, did you really think that this was all about just putting on your makeup and looking pretty and frolicking and then having another generation? And when she looked into this mirror, what she really said to her husband, look in this mirror and tell me what is your vision? If the vision is that this is the end of our people, then so be it. Then we won't be together to ha have another generation. But if you say that there is a future to our people, and we call it a sixth sense in English, we call it chachmat halev, the wisdom of the heart in Hebrew, then we have to procreate, and we have to multiply, and we have to have a future. And we call it in Kohelet, it's called, it's called chut hamishulash. Am Yisrael, Torah Yisrael, and Eretz Yisrael. The JEC represents exactly that. That was the Rav's, that was his vision. Am Yisrael, the Jewish people, are based on the education, which is the, which is the Torah, and then it focuses on the future of tomorrow, which is Eretz Yisrael, the center of our universe. Dr. President, I would like to move the motion to echo my husband's uh, sentiments that next year, Baruch Yisrael, im, they say that, 
If you want it, it isn't a dream. Imtirtsu zelo agada. And I would like for us in the future to be able to say that it is only in the reach of our hands. It's not just that har habayit biadenu. Eretz Yisrael biadenu. And if you will say to me, Miriam, it is so hard, I can't pick up, I can't do it, I will tell you what a Rav Shmulevitz said to me after he checked our mezuzahs and I went to him crying because everyone in this room knows if there's one Shalom Bayit issue that Moni and I have, it's about Eliyahu. And he looks at me crying and I said to him, Rabbi, before you leave, just one question about Eliyahu. And he looked at me and he says, don't think for a moment that there isn't an importance in the desire of a person. He wished that it was just the ratzon, the desire that everybody possessed. So I challenge you, halavai for the next dinner next year to be held in Yerushalayim, Abnuya, Am Yisrael Chai. Anka Pan is beginning her fifth decade as a teacher at the JEC. She has taught both in the, J in the Masifta and in Buria, more recently exclusively in Buria. It's exactly 41 years since she first taught. The award is called Educator of the Year, but it's actually more an award for a lifetime of teaching. And I have to say that even now, after the four decades, she still approaches each year as though it were her first, with the same enthusiasm, with the same dedication, with the same care for each individual student in her class. She is not only a teacher of the year, but she's a teacher for the ages. A successful teacher can always reach his or her students. Madame has been teaching here for many years, from the 70s through the 80s, the 90s, the 2000s, and now the 2010s. And she's always managed, whether it was boys, girls, through any age, through any years, whatever the student was, she always, with her excitement, reached the students. And that's how they learn French, because she just brings this energy into the room. You sit there for two minutes, you walk by the classroom, you can see the energy, you can hear it. And that's what really brings out the best in the students and why she's being honored tonight. Madame has been in this building for as long as I've been in the building. She certainly predates me. She's been here that long, both here and at RTMA. And she is the consummate professional. She cares, she prepares, she worries about her students. She is easy to work with. She is flexible. She goes about her business, does what she needs to do. Uh, visits me often to share thoughts with me. Really someone that I, I consider to be a member of the team. I learn something new every day, primarily the degree of devotion that she shows constantly to her students. And it's more than devotion, it's, it's love. She cares so much. There was a time when I had a major crisis in my family and Esther came to me and said Joanne I will do whatever you need me to do give me the girls grades 
everything that they've done all term, it was the end of the year, and this was before computers uh, doing the calculations and so on, I will calculate the grades for all of your students. I will take care of the report cards. You go and do what you have to do. And I didn't know, can I accept such an offer? Is it right? I, I was overwhelmed. And then one of the other teachers said to me, Joanne, if Esther is offering, she means it with all her heart. And that's what she did. I am forever grateful for the opportunity to work with Esther, to work in such a special place with such a really special person. Every year, we prepare a video to send to our graduates who are at, away in Israel at seminary. And each of the teachers gets on to just say hello to the girls and send their regards. Madame gets on every year and throws hugs and kisses through the video to her students. She really adores them, cares so much about them. I miss each and every one of you, this, you know, whether you are, in, you are in my French class, debate class, everyday thing, whatever, we miss you very, very much. You have given me the utmost pleasure and utmost happiness that anybody can have in the world. I thank everyone, I really mean from the bottom of my heart, everyone who had come in tonight, even the people who could not make it tonight, I thank you all. May Hashem bless you. May we always, I, we always be here for me, and I will be here for you and help you in every way and shape. Thank you. Love you all. Merci beaucoup. Félicitations. Je t'aime. Je t'adore, madame. Tu es magnifique. Merci beaucoup. Je vous aime. Nous t'aimons beaucoup. Mazel tov to our Educator of the Year, Madame Esther Kaptan. Rabbi Tatz, I think you made one mistake about the years. I think we're going back 10 years, so it's about 39 years. 1973? <laughs> <laughs> I looked. I looked it up. I, I signed it. I know. I don't. No, no, I'm only joking with you when I said that. I didn't want you to reveal my ears. <laughs> did you? <laughs> I said 41. I know that. <laughs> well, now that it has been revealed, I have been teaching in Broly and JC before that everything for 41 years. I think I started when I was 17 years old. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but then, in tribute to your sweet personality and mellifluous words, we present you with this honey dish Thank you. and read the Jewish Educational Center with, with heartfelt appreciation, Madame Esther Kaptan, Educator of the Year, signed by the President and myself and today's date. Of course, it was unnecessary writing. All we had to do is write with the heart of appreciation. Madame, and everybody, everybody will know who we meant. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you so much. Let's move away from the podium. Thank you. when we were first married. Uh, I was going to law school in Newark and we wanted a Jewish community that would be relatively close by and Mimi was going to New York so it was a convenient place for us to be. Um, Marty Knecht doesn't remember this but he actually helped us find our first apartment. And when we came to the North Avenue Shul I wound up sitting two rows behind all of the greener 
uh, most of which were the refugee developers, Sam Halpern, Joe and Harry Wilf, uh, Abe Zuckerman, Murray Pontier, Julius Summer, Alex Horowitz, and Marvin Rosenzweig's father was there, Carl Rosenzweig. And I felt a natural affinity for that group because I was a child of survivors as well. And watching that group through the years, you learned about what was important to them in terms of the JEC and Jewish education in general. Jewish education to them was the ultimate victory over the Nazis, Yimach Shmam. To see Jewish children educated in a wonderful, uplifting way was their ultimate joy, their ultimate pride. I come from a slightly different background in that my parents were American and um, they were born in 1910 and 1915, my mother in 1915, and there wasn't an education for girls, really, yeshiva education for girls. Uh, she was taught by an Alta Rebbe who used to come to the house, taught the girls to read and how to daven. And everything else she learned from home, but it wasn't a very academic education, it wasn't a delving into the texts of Yiddishkeit and philosophies. The kids, Baruch Hashem, were able to learn, they're able to be productive, they're, they've got jobs or are in grad school. JC is a great foundation, which you can take, you can grow with, you can continue, you can build a life, you can get a job. It takes a lot of money to educate a child, tremendous amount of money and tremendous amount of communal effort. You know, if you can't give money, you give help in the school or be supportive in some fashion to education and to the schools and schools. I would like to add that the Tights family, entire Tights family, has been instrumental in teaching us. Rav Tights as a leader, Mrs. Elisheva Tights as my teacher on Monday nights for, I can't even think how many years, it's been more than a dozen, maybe it's 15 years teaching wonderful things. She's brilliant and I love her. And uh, Rabbi Eliyahu Taitz, who taught the women's shear Shabbos for about eight years. Every Shabbos afternoon, we went through Chamisha Chumshe Torah, one Aliyah at a time each year, and just learned so much. Harry and Mimi are such wonderful honorees because they don't want to be honored. Harry would much prefer to be behind the scenes. He was an extremely reluctant Gabai, which made him great at the job. Mimi, very quietly behind the scenes, took care of organizing the parak on the lawn, my parsha shear, all these wonderful things that she did very quietly and it got done. And that's what's so fantastic about them. They don't want the spotlight, they just want to make sure things get done. As a partner of Harry's, I get to see many things that Harry and Mimi do uh, in their lives. And Harry and Mimi do things still a height, very quietly. And when there is a need, they're out there quietly taking care of that need for people. There are rare individuals who are always prepared to help out where it is necessary. And that typifies the Stadlers. A Gabay in the shul is needed, Harry is there to do it. Coordinating Peric on the lawn and things of that sort, Mimi is there to do it. And they are indeed Baruch Ir, a blessing in the city in which they find themselves. And we are blessed to have had them in our community for all this time. Commitment? That's Harry's middle name. There's nothing in this shul that he is not willing to join up and do for our community. Whether it's to serve as the Gabai, to run around and get names for Marvin, to become a Gabai Rishon, to dab for the Yamad, to serve on the board, to take care of our legal responsibilities, Nothing is above, beneath, too timely for Harry to take care of. If the JEC had to have a commercial for the ideal family, the Stadlers would be it. They roll up their sleeves and they do. But at the same time, they're a tremendous source of inspiration and advice for everyone else to stand up and do. It's a pleasure to be their neighbor and it's a pleasure to be able to be their rub as well. Uh, one of the other th things about Harry is he's a very passionate person. All of his loves he does passionately. Maybe that's why uh, we're giving them the Lave Tov Award, because of this passion, because passion comes from the heart. Thank you for the Lave Tov honor. We would like to thank all of you who do so much for the schools and for the shuls and make this community a great place. 
Thank you very much. And so should it continue. Mazel tov to the recipients of this year's Leave Tove Award, Harry and Mimi Stadler. I guess, Harry, we should be thankful that the Rangers lost because otherwise you might have been in Los Angeles tonight instead of here. <laughs> Those who work to strengthen the community will always be a source for good. Jewish Educational Center Annual Banquet, Harry and Mistadr Leiftov, signed as were the others. Mazel Tov. And made that those hearts be good and strong and firm on May of Essen. Um, thank you. Okay. For the first time in JEC history, two members of our exceptional maintenance staff are being recognized for their many years of dedication and service. A very special mazel tov to Stella Malvina Donofrio and Dennis Van Ness. Dennis, Stella. <laughs> I just want to comment that you've been working for the JC for over 20 years each. You know everybody's names. You know all the faces. It's dedication like that why we are honoring you tonight. It's dedication of walking in a snowstorm to come to the school. It's a dedication of... Dennis did that. From Newark, he walked to the school because he knew he needed to shovel the walk. Stella, Stella's in the building all hours of the day. You come in the morning, she's there already. I come back at night, she's there again. Stella is... that's Stella. But perhaps one of the most important things about, about the maintenance staff in general, and we're really honoring everybody tonight, but especially Dennis and Stella, they're incredibly dedicated staff. They're an honest staff. If they find money, they bring it into the school. An, a, an administrator of a different school was shocked that our students leave their lockers open with iPhones and iPads and things like that in their lockers overnight because they know when they come back in the morning, all the stuff will be there, because that's the type of people that we have working for us. And the ones... And the ones who set the example and set the tone are the senior members of that crew, Dennis and Stella. <laughs> so, along with these awards comes a very special message. Stella, Spoil your grandchild. Thank you. <laughs> and Dennis, enjoy this while you go fishing. Thank you. <laughs> yeah.
Mazel tov to all of our honorees, and mazel tov to you, our parents, faculty, and supporters who have made this all possible. We hope that you enjoyed our celebration tonight. Stay tuned for information about RTMA's special 60th anniversary festivities planned for next year and the 75th anniversary of the entire Jewish Educational Center in 2016.